So we're here backstage at Beach Break Live with Maverick Faber. How are you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing very good. The drink, oh no, that little drink just hit me, but yeah, I'm doing very good. <laughs> <laughs> um, you are going into um, Chase and Status. You yeah. have worked with them very recently. How was that? How did it come about? How was it working with them? Um, I think my booking agent, Obi, um, played them some songs of mine. They said, oh yeah, you've got a really interesting voice. We'd love to work with you. I literally went into the studio. They played me some bits. I, I freestyled a couple of little bits. And, and that's how the tune came together, Fire In Your Eyes. And I'm like, sorry. I've been a massive fan of Chasing States from the day I heard Eastern Jam. Like, got their, fir their first album for me was like the best album that was put out that year. It was like one of the only albums, if not the only, no, it was the only album that year that I could listen from start to finish. And then back again. So walking with them was fantastic. And also playing with them and gigging around Europe and the UK, it's just, it brings up a whole different vibe, you know, and it allows me to express myself in a different way, you know, jump about, get a bit more excited. So yeah, no, I love walking with them. They're, they're fantastic lads and they put out fantastic music. So it's an honor to walk with them, definitely. Absolutely, and you went out to snow bombing. Um, yeah. How was that festival? Yeah, it was good. I flew out on the Monday with my DJ, and we did a little uh, dubstep PA set at one of the smaller um, stages, and it was it was lively. And then I ended up going back to London, getting flown out to like the next day or something to go back on the Chase and Status tour, and then we went there on the Thursday. And yeah, it was, and we played the main stage. Oh, it was fantastic, yeah, I loved it. And Snow, I just thought it was a fantastic setting, you know, because like you've got this mad, it's like Ibiza in, in, in the, like the hills, like the yeah. Alps, you know what I mean? Beautiful, like we were, I was up on, we were up on like the, I don't know, it must be the Alps. Like we've got the, we got the cart straight up there and we're, we're all drinking down there playing techno house dubstep and I'm thinking it's a real weird setting, but it's beautiful like at the same time. It was like something about like 007. But yeah, it, it was lovely, no, it was a heavy festival. Awesome, so I just quickly want to talk to you about your sound. You've got a very distinctive, soulful sound. What were your influences growing up? Um, my dad was my main influence, I think, really. Um, he's always been a musician ever since I've been, uh, been young. Um, so I went to all his rehearsals at night time, like he'd play instead of like nursery rhyme tapes or anything like that. He'd play full like acoustic sets of like uh, traditional Irish music, his own southern blues, uh, old school uh, uh, rock music, you know, um, American rock music. And then when I was about eight or nine and he saw my passion for music, he, he allowed me to kind of delve into his uh, record collection. And we had a big, like, spacious attic at the time, do you know what I mean? It was, there was nothing in. Um, so I literally just went up there and stayed up there for hours, listening to mad records from like the Beatles to Fats Domino to Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin, Jimi Hendrix, Rolling Stones, Beach Boys, everything, like, everything. I just love music you know and i love sitting up there for for hours trying to find new music and then when i was about 12 or 13 i got into hip-hop mm -hmm. um and then that kind of sparked everything off because it was like it brought more of a message um and then when someone played me um a two-pack tape and i fell in love with two-packs music and the message he was putting across and i got into dizzy um, and UK, the UK side of things, and then got more into like the dance side of things, uh, house music, techno music through my sister, got into dubstep, drum and bass, and it just kind of, I just kind of sponged all that up and kind of like vomited it out in my music, <laughs> do you know what I mean, if that makes sense, but yeah. Awesome, so we are a festival's website. Yeah. You got a lot of festivals lined up this summer, where can our viewers see you? Everywhere, yeah. <laughs> literally. I think the only festival I haven't been booked for is Tea in the Park, and Reading and Leeds. I think that's it. And I could have, I think someone said to me, I've got booked for Reading and Leeds the other day, but yeah, but that's about <laughs> it. I, literally everything, even in Ireland, I'm doing all the festivals, I think, as well. So everywhere. Like. You have a really busy summer ahead then. Um, just quickly, last question What is the weirdest thing to have happened to you at a festival? Do you really want to know? <laughs> when I was uh, 16, I went to a festival in Ireland called Auction. I lost three toenails. You, you lost three toenails? And how did you lose your toenails? The mud was so bad. The mud was so bad that I lost my pair of shoes, lost all my socks. Someone came into my tent when we were, I was watching Kings of Leon, took all my underpants out of the, out the bag, <laughs> stood them into the ground, had nothing, literally nothing. I was walking around barefooted. Went to Daft Punk, watched about five minutes of Daft Punk, so a massive lad stood on my foot. All I heard was <coughs> I was like <coughs> <laughs> back to bottle of rum and went with like two of my friends and watched 
um, Brian Wilson from Beach Boys. Woke up in the morning, realised three of my toenails were gone. Oh. It wasn't a, it wasn't a painful experience, <laughs> but it was an experience and a half. You know I mean? But yeah, there's a little experience. Hope no one's too turned off by that. But yeah, <laughs> that's my experience. Of festivals. Well, let's hope that doesn't happen again today. Hopefully, Jesus Christ. If that happens again today, I think I might quit music. <laughs> I'm doing the wrong job. Well, thank you very much for taking the time out oh, to no, speak to us. It's lovely to meet you. Yeah, lovely. Thanks. Thank you very much.